Cute Tyke of Piscataway, your friendly neighborhood Schumann, Sophia Spiritualite, the Amerukai Mariam, and um, I just have a few things that I want to mention, that I want to point out, that I hopefully can tie together. So people are very, very careful about um, what they are intending to manifest at this time. And I'm going to start with the story of Ham, Shem, and Japheth. I want people to understand that Ham and Shem and Japheth were brothers. We're not talking about persons who were unfamiliar to others. The oldest brother was Japheth, okay? And Ham was the youngest and Shem was in the middle. Okay. Ham is the one who behaved like a heathen. And therefore, um, he was given the curse of Cain. His whole bloodline, his posterity was given the curse of Cain and was cursed to serve his brothers. Just like Cain was cursed to serve Abel. That's the curse of Cain. Okay. Um, the scripture, Revelations 3 and 9 also refers to this same curse, the curse of the synagogue. You say you are um, Jews, but you are not. The curse of the synagogue. You are really the synagogue of Satan. That is the same curse. That is the curse of Cain. That is the curse of Canaan. It's that you are serving a God who doesn't exist. You're, you're cursed to serve at the behest of entities that have no power. Okay, something I want people to keep in mind is that when Ham told his brothers what he had done, the brothers devised a plan that would keep them and their posterity safe and would also solve the problem of Noah being naked. Okay, they put a blanket on their backs. They went into the room backwards and they put the cover over Noah. The reason I'm mentioning that is because Shem and Japheth always work together. We have not really been careful in how we are understanding what is going on. What do I mean by that? I did a video, it was a long video about who Japheth was and who his and his descendants are, okay? This this the 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 region of persons that Japheth covers is all the way from Britain like all the way to Australia and everything in the middle. It's mostly most of this planet is covered with people who can trace their line to Japheth. But what you have to remember is that Japheth and Shem always work together. So wherever you see Japheth, you see Shem. And wherever you see Shem, you see Japheth. What, what, how do, how, why would I say that? When I was, when I made that video, I talked about how they have a place in Russia called Mari El, where they worship the old religion and they also have their indigenous religion. Now, how do you get an indigenous religion like that in the middle of Europe? That's clearly tied to a religion that we were doing over here in America, in Shimland, right? Well, you get that because... We always did stuff together. This is why there's Egypt's everywhere you go. This is why there's Nineveh's everywhere you go. This is why there's Salem's everywhere you go. It's because everything that Shem did, Japheth did, and everything that Japheth did, Shem did. We did things together. What other proof, more recent proof do I have for that? Well, if you don't know this about the American Revolutionary War, Russia was sending troops over to help us fight the British. In this case, these British redcoats are the Hamites, the, the, the Moors, the Hamites. This is the same group of people. 
the Moors, the um, Professional Victims Unit 1 and 2, um, and these people who um, go out of their way to give themselves titles, um, these, this is all a descendancy of, 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 these are all Moorish tendencies. These are all Ashkenazi tendencies, okay? Um, these are all Babylonian, Sumerian tendencies. This is why people want you to believe that the Sumerian epics, uh, the Sumerian gods are the oldest god when that can't possibly be possible when you have a whole Hindu pantheon with about a thousand different gods. How can, or even not just the Hindu pantheon, you got the Vedas, you got the Wadas from um, the British Isles, you've got Celtic mythology. There's so much mythology, there's no way that the Sumerians can be the oldest. It's not possible. And so it's all a confidence game. They want you to believe that the Sumerians are the oldest and the Sumerians are the ones who are in charge because honestly, those are the ones who are supposed to be serving Shem and Japheth. See, because the curse of Cain or Canaan is that Ham would have to serve his both of his brothers, Shem and Japheth. It wasn't that... The curse was, oh, you just have to serve one. No, he was cursed to always serve us. Not just Shem. Shem and Japheth. And so you have the first part of the, the first couple chapters in Genesis where they're talking about these quote unquote Sumerians and Anunnaki's and all of that. And y'all let that particular aspect of it you make it you you believe that it covers the whole Bible when that's simply not the case. Clearly, they're talking about a different God than a Sumerian God when they get to Moses being on the mountain. Clearly, Yeshua is not talking about no Sumerian gods when he's on the cross crying out, Elahu, Elahu, why have you forsaken me? Not talking about the same ones. That's why they preserve the language. And so I need people. Number one, to stop judging people, period. Honestly, you, the more you judge people, even identifying people, I don't know how to identify anyone anymore. I can only judge the spirit by the spirit. I can only judge or, or determine if someone is good based on the image that they put out. And that could be wrong at any moment. But I'm, I, I can't judge any of these people. I would not say that a, a person who is uh, the opposite skin tone of me is a descendant of Ham or a descendant of Japheth or even a descendant of Shem. We come in all different colors. And so to assume that, oh, all white people are X, Y, and Z, that's not true because a good deal of them are Japheth. Japheth was the oldest. This is why they always protect us. If you notice, people who have been to Europe, they don't have a problem with us. And I always thought, because I read a lot of history, well, why didn't they have a problem when black people went over to Paris or whatever? Well, the reason is because they never had a problem with us. They never had a problem with us. It was never an issue. And so the only people who have problems when we show up is Ham. We make them very uncomfortable. So you can start judging people by who is uncomfortable in your presence. If people are uncomfortable when you show up, probably some Hamites. I'm just being, you know, specific. That means all of these Ashkenazis are not Hamites either. It's really what do they do when you walk in the room? You yourself being from the line of Shem or even from the line of Japheth. What do they do when you show up? You can't judge based on what they do when other people show up because you don't know what demons or gods or whoever that other person is dealing with. You don't know. And so if you judge your experience of what someone else does, you don't know what any of that is about. Like, for example, if a police officer takes out one of our people, 
that looks like us, how do we know that that person who was taken out by that that quote unquote police officer was not a person who had taken their father out in a past lifetime? You don't know. We don't know. And so I'm just especially right now, this Pisces energy is extremely difficult to navigate because it is really, really easy for you to think about something and for that thing to appear and if you are not focused on thinking about what you want then things that you don't want are going to show up and so I am begging you all I'm imploring you all take this time and focus on what you want what you need what will make you feel better what kind of life you want to live and don't focus on these other people this new nation is very, very important. It is a key factor, um, you know, coming into our air, our Libra um, eclipse um, or whatever. Um, it's very important coming into our eclipse, our lunar eclipse, and then into our solar eclipse. But by the time the solar eclipse come, a lot of the heavy lifting is going to be done if you focus now on what you want and you don't get distracted by all of the things that are out there. So um, that was one thing. Another thing is I'm going to advise everyone to be very careful about the way that you talk about sovereignty, uh, citizenship or whatever, because um, there are a lot when you determine that you're going to be sovereign anything and that you don't want to be involved with quote unquote America, you are opening yourself up to being a enemy combatant. That is the rule of the, that is the law of the land. This is in every land that you go. This is why the Hamites, um, who have been thrown out of every land they go to have been thrown out of every land that they go to because they refuse to take on the customs of that land. And by saying that you are so-and-so better than so-and-so someone else or whatever the case may be, you are putting yourself in a position to be given the curse of ham. Think about this very carefully. If you are unwilling to pledge your allegiance to the American homeland, not the corporation, the homeland, the American homeland, you are running the risk of taking the curse of ham, which is not on you, and putting it on you. We're not talking about Esau's trouble. We're not talking... We're, 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 we're talking about ham, okay? We're talking about right after the flood when when things were made new again. A curse was put on ham that he would always have to serve his brothers. If you take the position that you're unwilling to be to to be faithful to a particular land, in this case the American homeland, very, very specific language, then you are running the risk of being labeled as an enemy combatant. Now, I don't know this guy, Nature Boy. I know nothing of him, but I can tell you the premise for his case even being open probably has to deal with the way that he was throwing around the term sovereignty and also the way that he was talking about America. I don't have a problem with the American homeland. I have always been devoted to this land. I am from this land. This land flows through my veins. I don't have a problem with that. The problem I have is with the system that they put over it and won't let it work the way that it was intended. I don't have a problem with the rules. We follow the rules over here, all of them, but we follow all of the rules. We don't let them get away with changing the rules in the middle of the game. We follow the rules as they were intended. This is a very, very specific difference. We do not have the capability of being lazy in our language right now. Lazy in your language at this time specifically is going to get you into a great 
deal of trouble. It is better to think five times and say one thing than to say a thousand things and then have to go back and correct it. This is why you have seen videos from me less because I understand that especially at this time, we have to be careful in the way that we use our language. I am asking everyone to be careful in the way that you use your language. Even if you believe for some reason that people have done you in a way that is unfair, using inflammatory language in that regard is only going to bring you inflammatory situations. I'm only saying something because I can see it. I can see the doom loop being set up as a noose around y'all's necks. I can see it. And so I'm imploring people to be very careful with your language. You are allowed to serve whatever God that you want to serve. Nobody is interfering with that. But be very careful about insulting the land you were born on and the land that your, your grandparents were born on and the land that you're going to die on. Okay? Very, very careful because it's something I realized is that there have been multiple incarnations of our brother. First, he came in through the Hindu pantheon. Then he came in through the Japheth pantheon because why? This is what happened with Leah and Rachel. Jacob had to marry Leah first because why? The oldest had to be married before the youngest. Japheth is just as important as Shem. Japheth had a Jesus come through their line for sure. Just like Shem had a Jesus come through the line. Our Jesus, our black Jesus is that Jesus megalith with the fire natal blast and the feather on his head. That's our black Jesus. The Yeshua that previously incarnated was Japheth's Jesus from the tribe, from, from the Japheth pantheon. Okay. You got to really think about how this thing come. Ham had a Jesus too. What was that? Uh, Thoth, Tahuti, whatever. Ham had a had a Jesus too. The the Kim the the Kimites had a, a a Jesus too that came. So every pantheon has had a Jesus come. Our Jesus, our Savior, is the one that's in that megalith, the one that has our same skin tone. Okay. Don't. I would be very careful about insulting our brother in his other incarnations. Let me just put it that way. He had a white incarnation. He had a blue incarnation. He had a black incarnation. He had a bunch of incarnations. I personally would be careful about insulting his other incarnations and the people who believe in his other incarnations because those people have created a thought form that has power that can derail your blessings coming to you because of how you are engaging with that entity, which is why I respect all the gods. Not just the ones I agree with and not just the ones I disagree with. Even when I have to deal with demons, I'm very respectful. That's going to be really, really important moving forward because if all of this power is coming in to give us everything that we want, the last thing that you need is some entity that's lying dormant within you to hear you saying something that offends it and have that entity stop you from getting what you want because that will happen. I promise you it will happen. You have to be, you don't know if you were once incarnated in the JFS pantheon. That so-called white Jesus you're talking about may be a Jesus that you once worshiped. So insulting that so-called white Jesus as one that you may have worshiped is probably a bad idea. 
Now, yes, I understand that the powers that be turned him into a whole nother entity. But talk about the powers that be the Hamites that did that. Talk about them, not about the God, because no matter what you like, right, wrong, black, white or green, that deity is a deity. That deity is a deity that's located on the other side that has power, a lot of power. And so I have never disrespected any form of the way that our brother showed up. He can do his thing however he wants to. I don't have no control over that. And I understand that I have been here in multiple cycles in different skin tone bodies. So making fun of that history is like making fun of myself is doing a disrespect a disservice to my higher self and so i would just be careful that's just an example because i you could also be creating more problems with your your just your life in general Ugh. lord you could be creating more problems with your life in general um, by saying things that you don't mean. So I would implore people to just watch what you say, watch what you think you need to be in 100% control because if you're not in 100% control, one of these gods has taken you over. And someone like me can almost tell you who it is. Um, if it's necessary, but we're going to, we're, this is my attempt to reel in all those energies that's in you that wants to say hey those people over there they're suffering and that's what they get you don't do that you don't know if he was born into that bloodline before this is not your first time here and it would be foolish to think that every time you came here you was born into the same bloodline because that doesn't make any sense how can you get done the work of the most high if every time you come in the same exact bloodline it doesn't make sense being a star seed is about being from a particular celestial bloodline has nothing to do with skin color. I'm sorry. I, 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 it, I don't think it has to do with skin color, especially when you think about the fact that Shem and Japheth always work together and Shem and Japheth didn't look the same. And Japheth doesn't look the same as Shem now. This time we're here under the, the banner of, of Shem, uh, of Mari, Amarika. But we've been here under many different banners trying to assist. The, the whole point of the star seeds of the earth angels is to advance the mission of our father. It is not about skin color. It's about what, hey, what do you need me to do this time? Okay. All right. Send me in in this body. I think I can get it done in this body. Oh, what do you need me to do? Okay. Send me in in this body. I think I can get it done in this body. That's how it works. And to... Uh, not that skin tone is not important. I'm not saying that, but in your mind, when you think about it, when you're by yourself, you need to have an understanding that it really is not about you're here in this body in this time at, in, in now, but, uh, that's not true for, for everyone. Um, and the other thing I wanted to say, which I forgot to say in my new moon video is that. Um, it's going to be really, really important to do cord cutting. I'm going to just have to do another video on that because um, I'm going to do a specific candle just for cord cutting with this um, new moon. Plus, I'm going to do something with the full moon, too. Um, so I'll make a whole nother video on that because two readers said the exact same thing. Like, not just two. Two readers plus about three astrologers were like, oh, you have to cut cords. Y'all have to cut cords out there. Um, it's really important to sever these contracts, especially with these kingdom spouses. I did share a video, um, from Linda likes tarot, tarot, where she went into detail about that, but I'm going to do another video and read the article that she brought up and, um, and discuss it in a little bit more detail. But yeah, this is the time when you have the opportunity to break these contracts. And if y'all remember this time last year was when we broke that big contract with the, um, the, the dumb diverses. And so this is a very, very powerful time of manifesting. And if you're manifesting a battle between you and the American government or between you 
and uh, or, or you're manifesting a switch between you and the Hamite so that you get the curse of Canaan, I think that'd be a very foolish way to waste your um, to waste your manifestation power. You have to be very, very careful with your language and really, really look into the words that you use when you say stuff. Because they don't mean what you think. I always have to go back and look up words and say, well, what's that word even mean? Why use that word? Why so specific? Um, and the reason why is because words have actual meaning. And the way that you use the word is going to determine how someone used it against you. I have a good example of this. I'm in the middle of an arbitration and the lawyers keep calling me sovereign, sovereign citizen which I'm not sovereign, not a citizen. So your, your, your premise is entirely wrong. And because the language that I use is of that of a sovereign citizen, they want to throw me in that category, which is why I'm always extremely vocal by saying I am not sovereign. I'm not a citizen. I don't fall into those categories. I don't know those people. I am a consumer. Most of the time when I'm dealing with them, I'm a, no, 100%, I'm a consumer. Then when I go from being a consumer, then I'll be a U.S. national. Or if I'm not a U.S. national, then I am um, a beneficial owner. But I don't take that title sovereign citizen because I know what it means. Um, there, you cannot be, you just can't be sovereign. But because I know that that's what they do to try to rile, you know, people up into saying more things than um, they should, that turns out to be a great, huge problem. Therefore, I am suggesting to people that you turn off your trigger abilities and you don't get triggered by this stuff, especially from now through the um, Libra um, full moon and then into the Aries new moon It's a lot of really great things that are coming our way and the switch really is here but they will doom loop you back into taking their curse i really want y'all to go into genesis i think it's genesis 9 and read that curse that's the curse that the people a certain group of people have on them and they are trying everything they can to put it on you and I'm just really concerned that people are willingly taking on this curse because they somehow think it's a blessing when they don't understand it as a curse. Of course, the enemy, the adversary will sell you a blessing and call it a curse. I mean, sell you a curse and call it a blessing. Of course, they'll do that. Oh, of course you want to be in the power. You want to be the one in charge. All you have to do is... Tell everybody that you're sovereign and um, that you're not under anyone's jurisdiction. That That's going to put you in power. That's not going to work, actually. That's going to make it much worse. No, you want to be under protection of this beautiful land that is our inheritance. And you don't want to be, you want to be very vocal about what you do want. And you don't want to put so much time and energy into what you don't want, especially right now. Focus on what you want to happen. Focus on what you want your life to look like. Do not focus on things you don't want because objects in the mirror are closer than they appear. That thing will show up and there will be absolutely nothing I can do for you because you will have willingly taken on a curse that was never yours. And I'm really, really concerned that people are using language very, very recklessly um, and they're bringing about curses, especially this curse with Ham. This is a huge thing. And this is this is the time. This is the only time they can give this thing back to us because that's what they did. They they put that curse on us and had us running. At least they said what they said. If they were actually able to do it, I don't know. But they said they put that curse on us and had us running around and had us being this. What do you think the middle passage is? It's the passage from the middle child to the youngest child. From the blessing of Shem to the curse of Ham. It's the middle passage. And this is what they're trying to doom loop us back into right now. So just be careful with your language. 
um, and look at this thing from a multi-dimensional view. You're not just a Hebrew. You're a spirit having a human experience. You may be Hebrew in this incarnation. That is absolutely true. But Hebrewism is a religion. It's a faith. Okay. What it's not is a country. It is not a, uh, 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 it's not a tribe. Because even that term Judah, to me personally, I would not use that term because I believe it's inflammatory. And the reason why I'm saying that is because when you see that the people in the tribe of Judah thought that everyone else who wasn't in the tribe of Judah was not as good as them, why would you want to treat people like that? Again, we have to prove that we've learned the lesson. You cannot prove that you've learned the lesson if you're doing the same things your ancestors did. Is that what Jesus did? What did Jesus do? He went around talking to everybody, healing everybody, and not holding it against them, quote unquote, who they were affiliated with. He even healed a Canaanite woman. So he wasn't holding that against them either. You have to be very, very careful about the way that you use your language it's really really important you have to have a really strong understanding of the words that are coming out of your mouth and what they mean and a lot of this requires you to stop take it slow think it through and only say what you mean don't say anything else other than what you mean and try to be as clear as possible. So if it takes you a long time to respond to people, you can tell them, I'm thinking. If you don't know the whole scenario, you give them exactly what you're thinking. And then you stop talking. If they don't understand it, let them provide some kind of feedback for you to clarify. But there's no need to word vomit a bunch of stuff out. And it's funny because I did that thing on Monday. That was the right time to do it because if I had waited to the day... I couldn't have said what I said on Monday in my other video. It had been a disaster because I was I was still processing all of that stuff. So I can be very clear and precise in the way that I talk today. This is the Pisces influence. You have to be clear. You have to be precise. You have to say what you mean. And you have to mean what you say. So please, everyone, I beg you, I implore you, please be careful with the way that you use language. Please, in general, moving forward, because if we're going into the quote unquote age of Pisces <clears throat> publicly, then publicly you have to be very careful with the way that you use language. It's not that you don't talk and it's not that you have to be perfect, but you have to think before you speak. What does this mean? How am I using it? And I better give an explanation of what I mean when I say that. So it cannot be used against me because if you looked at my, my, uh, my readings, my predictions, they're going to try in a few years to bring this thing that they're doing right now back up and try it again at the end of this cycle of, um, whatever, when we get into, um, the next leap year. So whatever you say at this time, they're going to bring it up to you at the end of the next leap year to see if you, A, you really live in this life. You really mean it. You said X, Y, and Z. Let's show you what, like, for example, if you take on the curse of ham, you know, because you are chosen, you are a star seed, everything might be good for the next three years. But when you get into that leap year, they will say, oh, well, you took on the curse of ham. You're not Shem. You, you, you said you was this. You said you was that. And next thing you know, you're getting the curses, four years worth of curses, because the people who got, who are actually supposed to get a curse are going to, you know, hold some of their curses to give to try and put on someone else. At least they're going to try to. It's not that the anyway, I don't want to say too much. The point of the matter is I need people to be way more careful with their language than they are right now. Even in your mind, if you start thinking things that don't belong to you, like I always say, you have to say, what is that? That's not mine. I'm going to pass. I'm going to pass on that. I'm going to pass on that. That's not mine. That belongs to someone else. Oh, that's being projected onto me. Oh, I reject that. You have to reject the stuff that comes in your mind that does not belong to you.
at every turn. If you do not, there will, there's consequences for that. I'm only telling you because there's consequences. I can see them. It makes me very worried about people. Really, really worried. I don't want anyone to unnecessarily be um, uh, go through any unnecessary pain and suffering. And I have, you know, relegated myself to not leave anyone behind. So this is one of those things. If you are careful with your words, you say what you mean, you mean what you say, you think carefully about who your allegiance is to. Um, and just think about it this way. If Yeshua presented, if Yeshua was stamped on this earth, on the physical earth here, then doesn't that mean you should be working on your relationship with the physical earth? He didn't come in a man this time. He came in, a, in on the physical earth. All of these things, these signs that are happening, they're coming on the physical earth. So doesn't that mean you ought to be really, really respectful of the physical earth? I mean, it only reasons that way. So I hope you all understand what I'm saying. Please be careful. Please be careful. Please be careful with your language. Lots of mistakes can be made this weekend and, and you will be paying for them for a very, very, very long time, which we do not want. Okay. Okay. So, um, I hope this meets you all well, of course. Um, peace and blessings to you all, and we'll see you in the next video.